Whispering about it. Just Patsy. Come on, Andy. We're pulling up the rocking chair. Some of us have on clothes. Sorry. <laughs> Better. Did you say something, Mom? Good morning, friends. Welcome this morning to worship at Jones Memorial United Methodist Church. Welcome to this family worship experience. We are excited uh, to be here with you on this beautiful morning. Uh, we are excited to have this time together to come and to put our attention upon God, um, to, to bring some focus in the midst of busyness and um, all the things that we deal with beyond these walls and, and in our lives. And as we come together, there's some things that are going on that we want to make sure um, you are aware of and you can plug in if you want to. So let's watch this uh, quick announcement video. One of our missions projects here in the scenic South District of the United Methodist Church is our hands-on mission kits for the Ishe Anesu Project in Zimbabwe. All of our different small groups and Sunday school classes are donating the required items needed to make these five gallon bucket kits. Together, we will fill 40 buckets, but we need your help to get this project over the finish line. We still need to raise around $200 to actually ship all of these buckets to the Ishe Anesu project in Matari, Zimbabwe. If you want to help us finish off this project, please drop your donations into the missions buckets in the back of your worship space. Summer is just around the corner, and that means Vacation Bible School. Our VBS will be on June 12th through the 16th, and we need your help to make it a success. 
Check out the list of donations that we are still needing. Register to volunteer or register your children by scanning the QR codes found in your worship guide on the announcement sheets or by clicking the links in our weekly newsletter and on Facebook. Help be a part of making an impact in the lives of our kids and the kids in our community this summer. One more thing. If you are not a member of Jones Memorial United Methodist Church but are interested in becoming a member or have wondered what that might look like, you are invited to lunch with me, Pastor Claire, next Sunday following worship. I will share about the United Methodist Church and what it means to be a member, but I'll also answer your questions about membership. If you would like to attend this free luncheon to learn more about becoming a member, just scan the QR code in your worship guide or in the card in your basket or call the church office. I invite you to stand now and let us be called into this time of worship. What joy it is to have you here today. We have come from very busy lives, filled both with joys and difficulties. Welcome to this place in which God will ease your burdens and celebrate your joys with you. We have come to find hope and peace in our lives. Whatever has happened in your life this week, know that God is with you and offering you peace, rest, and blessing. Thank Thanks be to God. God, who accepts us and welcomes us as we are. Amen. And remain standing now and join together in singing as the praise team leads us.
be seated. So we are um, in the midst now of a four-week sermon series where we're exploring why the church matters. And last week we talked specifically about why the church matters, how important the church is in connecting people with God, that we are Christ's hands and feet in the world each and every day. Today um, we're going to talk about giving and why giving matters. And so as we begin to think about this, I want to read a scripture passage from Mark's um, gospel. This is the 12th chapter, and I'll begin reading in verse 38. This is a, um, an observation that Jesus makes, and you might recognize it by the name of, of the widow's might. So hear this, hear this story that Jesus tells. As he was teaching, Jesus said, watch out for the legal experts. They like to walk around in long robes. They want to be greeted with honor in the markets. They long for places of honor in the synagogues and at banquets. They are the ones who cheat widows out of their homes and to show off, they say long prayers. They will be judged most harshly. Jesus sat across from the collection box for the temple treasury and observed how the crowd gave their money. Many rich people were throwing in lots of money. One poor widow came forward and put in two small copper coins worth a penny. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I assure you that this poor widow has put in more than everyone who's been putting money in the treasury. All of them are giving out of their spare change, but she, from her hopeless poverty, has given everything she had, even what she needed to live on. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, as a pastor, I am more than aware that when the pastor starts talking about money, people don't get too excited. So here we are today, <laughs> on that ever dreaded sermon top topic of money. And I'd like to tell you that I'm gonna sugarcoat this and, and make it all nice and easy to swallow so that we can all leave here feeling really good about ourselves. But the thing is, if we're gonna be honest, really honest about why giving matters, I can't do that. Because you see, the matter of giving and, and generosity, it, when it's all boiled down, it's a reflection on our relationship with God. God's mandates about giving are clear, and Jesus' teachings about money and the poor number second only to his teachings about the kingdom of God. Jesus talks about how we use our money a lot. In case you all are not aware, I'm pretty passionate about giving back to God. And so let me share with you, as I said I would do last week, through this sermon series each week, I'm going to share with you why these things matter to me. Last week I talked about why church matters to me, and today I want to tell you why giving matters to me. First and foremost, giving matters to me because God has given everything for me, for all of us. God in Christ Jesus gave himself for me. How could I not give back to him? It would be like receiving a gift from a friend and never saying thank you. And God has given us clear instructions about how we are to say thank you to him. And that is to return a portion of what God calls our first fruits. Specifically, we are to offer back to God a tenth of the first harvest from our fields. So today what that means is I give back to God right off the top of my income. And there's never been a time in my life that I haven't given to the church. Before I was earning an allowance, my parents gave my sister and me a quarter 
every single Sunday. And we were to put that in the offering plate each week when it passed by us. And then when we started receiving an allowance, we were taught to tithe. And we made a pledge to our church to do so weekly or monthly. Currently, between the two of us, Ken and I give a little over 12% of our salary, our total salaries between our two churches. And we wouldn't have it any other way. When we figure our monthly budget, this is our first obligation, our first fruits. If things are tight, we don't cut what we give to the church. We make sacrifices in other areas, things like eating out or, or going to the movies. Giving makes us better financial managers, but it also keeps us from getting too attached to stuff. Often we have to say no to stuff so that we can fulfill our obligation to God. Giving is our way of saying thank you to God. God has asked it of us, it is the least we can do. And certainly there are lots of things that I would love to use that money for. Maybe some cable TV, a nice fancy new bike. I'd love that. But, but those are not necessities. And giving to God as a faithful Christian shows our devotion to God. It is a necessity. Giving matters to me, friends, because God matters to me. Now, as we did last week, I want you all to pause for a minute and share with one another why giving matters to you. So take a few minutes and talk with one or another about that, and we'll come back together in a few minutes.
Sam. I'm going to call us back together. If everybody hasn't had a chance to share, you'll have a moment in a, in a few minutes. Um, and I hope you heard some some other ideas and other perspectives about why giving matters. You know, as Christians, as I mentioned, what this all boils down to at its very core, giving to God matters because God matters in our lives. And that's what's illustrated by this widow that Jesus observes at the temple treasury in, in today's scripture reading. What matters most to this woman as she walks into the temple is her relationship with God. And she shows that through her offering. She has given literally her whole life, everything she had to live on that day in those two copper coins. You know, probably everybody else standing around her looked at her and thought, ah, she just put in two pennies, nothing. But in fact, she was putting in everything she had. How many of us, let's be honest, how many of us would do that? One day, a pastor was called to the house of a church member who was having some financial difficulties. And the pastor counseled this man for a while, and then he stopped, and he said, let's have a word of prayer, and while I pray, you make a commitment to give one-tenth of your income to the Lord. As they bowed for prayer, this man was thinking about his income, and he thought to himself, that won't be difficult. That's about $1,800 a year, only about $35 a week. And so, so they prayed, and the man promised to give back 10% to the Lord and to the Lord's work. Years passed, years and the man's increased over time. It, it was over $200,000. And he called for the pastor again. He said, Pastor, I'd like to be released from that 10% I promised to give the Lord several years back. You know, a tenth of my, a tenth of my income is now over $20,000 a year, and I have some plans for spending that money. That's no problem, the pastor said. Let's pray. As they bowed their heads, the pastor began to pray, and he said, Lord, you know what a problem this bigger salary has been for my brother here. I'm asking you to reduce his income to the original $18,000 a year so he'll be able to afford his tithe once again. Here's the thing. Friends, when we give to God out of our surplus, it means we're making decisions on how we spend our money based on societal pressures, which these days means more and more and more. We need the next great gadget or a, a new car. We have to have a, a bigger house with the highest speed internet and the fanciest streaming cable and, and movie service. We've got to keep up with the Joneses or the Kardashians or whoever it is we're keeping up with these days. We become so consumed with our desire for more that we actually become slaves to our money. But when we give sacrificially to God and to God's purposes, we detach ourselves from the stuff, which invariably means we are freed to serve God and not only with our resources, but with all of ourselves. We make decisions about big purchases instead of impulse buying. We make sacrifices and determine what really matters, what's really necessary and what's not. And when we make financial decisions with God in mind first, it also enables us to plan and save for the future, for the well-being of ourselves, our, our children, our family, and the community around us. And it has been my true experience, friends, that in giving to God generously out of my first fruits, I still have everything I need and more. Our gifts to God can and do allow for amazing work to be done in and through the church. 
reaching people with the good news of Jesus Christ. But we give to God first and foremost because we are disciples of Jesus Christ. We give to God out of thanksgiving for God's great salvation in our souls. We give to God out of love for God and our neighbor. And we give to God in order to keep our focus on Christ. It's only in, in offering our lives and giving our lives completely and totally over to God that we find life abundant. That, that is why giving matters. Will you bow with me for a word of prayer? Lord God, what a blessing it is to be loved by you and to be loved so immensely that you gave everything for us in your son, Jesus Christ. As we experience new life in you, God, indeed, we recognize and, and want to say thank you for all that you have given us. And so I pray, God, that you would help us to see how we can be more generous in our lives because you matter to us, because we would be nothing without you, because all that we have and all that we are is yours. So guide us and direct us, God as we seek to share your love and your gifts in the world every single day. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. So as we think about what it looks like to give today, you have in your baskets a, an activity sheet with some instructions. There's some cups and some water and some markers and you're going to, and a, a sheet of um, paper, paper towel, you're going to put some color on that paper towel, pour out the water into the cups, and you're going to watch how God's giving and our giving come together to make something beautiful. And as you uh, do that activity, discuss together. Again, if you didn't finish talking about why giving matters, you can talk about that reflect on what god has given you and how that makes you feel and then why it's important to give back to god and why that could also be um, challenging and so some steps that you might take to be more generous in your life Welcome to leave those on your table. We'll clean them up afterwards, uh, and we'll get that all cleaned up. Uh, but would you mind joining me uh, for a moment of prayer? Thanks. Let's pray. God, we, uh, we thank you for this place. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this community. Uh, we thank you for uh, a convicting message and lesson in all of this and how uh, how hard giving can be, um, how we feel the loss, we feel the missed opportunities of giving. But God, we thank you that it is only when we give that we, we, we get more. We get more of you. We get more of your purpose for our lives, God. We thank you for all that. And God, we ask that you would give us wisdom to give well, courage to give generously, and kindness to give who needs it. I we ask for all those things as we continue to think about what it means to give and to give to you. Uh, but God, we also pray for uh, other communities that are experiencing pain and loss. God, we pray for the city of Buffalo um, who experienced unimaginable loss uh, such a mundane place as a shopping store. 
Um, God, we pray for the families. We ask that you give them your comfort in a time where there is likely to be absolutely no comfort and peace when it seems like there will never be any peace now that the people that they love are gone. Um, God, we ask that you be with them in their community. We ask that you continue to be with uh, the people of Ukraine who are still experiencing destruction uh, and death and loss. Um, even though it seems to be going better in our eyes, it, for some it, it will never get better because of what they have lost. God, we pray for those. But God, we thank you for your son. Um, that, that death does not have the final word, that loss does not have the final word, that we can have life through him. And we thank you for the prayer that he taught us all to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And as the band comes back up and gets set up for a uh, final part of worship, I want to remind you of the, the offering stations uh, throughout the sanctuary. We're talking about giving. Um, this is one of the best ways to give back to God is through your community. So we have offering stations throughout the room. We have two in the back and one in the front. You can give by texting the amount you want to give to 84321. I was, I'm always afraid I'm going to forget that. You can give by texting. You can give online through the Jones Memorial app as well. We want to make it as easy as possible. And you can give whenever you want to give or whenever you're led in the service.
Amen. Let's sing, uh, stand and sing this last one with us. Close out. We were talking about trusting God, and I said, you know what I noticed? None of you this evening, when you pulled your chair over here, checked to make sure that it would hold you. You just sat down because you knew that it was going to hold you up. And I think while giving matters and church matters and all these things that we've been talking about matters is because it's living into that trust, right? It's trusting that God is going to hold you up in the midst of it all, no matter what. And... So when I'm thinking about that trust, what I think of is this, the more we rely on him and not ourselves, and, and, and giving in, in so many areas, the more we experience a freedom that just doesn't make sense. And when we do that, we end up living a life that makes people wonder. 
And when we live a life that makes people wonder why we're different, people come to know Christ. So we get to experience a true freedom and God gets to learn, have more people who come to know him and they get to experience that true freedom. And that happens in so many areas and giving is just one of them. So this week, I encourage you to rely on God, to trust him with everything you have because everything you have comes from him. I hope y'all have an amazing week and I'm so glad to have you with us today in worship. Thank you.